We're back at the Carnegie Library in Squirrel Hill, where we're visiting with some of the more than 50 authors who've appeared on our region's business, discussing subjects from amusement parks to zombies, though in business topics too. We'll get back to those interviews in moments, but first, we'd be remiss if we didn't take a look around the Carnegie Library in Squirrel Hill itself. CLP Squirrel Hill was built in 1972, but renovated in 2005 as part of Carnegie Library's Libraries for Life Capital Improvement Campaign. The renovated library fits Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, or LEAD, standards and features ample natural daylight to read by, five cozy reading nooks, a teen space, and a dedicated children's area. It is the very model of a modern metropolitan library. The Carnegie Library in Squirrel Hill is home to the NAM Business Center, where you can get volumes of sound business advice. As entrepreneur and author Raul Valdez Perez points out, advice is for winners. And he's quick to share how to seek, get, and use advice. And he should know a thing or two about the value of good advice. Just across the street from the library here, Raul co-founded the internet search company Vivissimo which was later purchased by IBM for an undisclosed amount to power its growing big data analytics portfolio. I spent the last couple of years uh, writing a book. The, the title of the book is Advices for Winners and really starts from an observation I made way, way back when I was an undergraduate. The observation being that people generally are not very proactive at seeking advice, personalized advice from others. Or if they are, they don't really know how to do it well. And it's a teachable, it's a learnable skill like many other things. So I've had many experiences where I've, I've had to actually seek personalized advice for others, namely in starting Vivissimo as an academic leaving the university in 2000, knowing nothing about business uh, <laughs> whatsoever. So I decided to put things together uh, and write a self-improvement book that would teach people to become better advice seekers and also look into the scholarly literature about what is known about why people do or do not uh, seek advice and what, uh, what obstacles there are along the way. Why don't entrepreneurs or, or, or people in general uh, ask for the advice they need? Actually, that's one of the chapters in the book, uh, Excuses for Not Seeking Advice. And I've actually studied this, uh, reflected, talked with people, looked in the literature, and I've compiled 28 reasons okay. why people don't seek advice. All right, give me the top couple of them, I guess. The top couple. <laughs> I think the number one reason is people don't think of it. It doesn't occur to them to seek advice. They do think of it when it's a health problem, when it's a legal problem, but when it's many other issues, they just do their thing and they don't consider, for example, that the same problem has been faced by thousands or millions of people before, so they could have a conversation to see, for example, what issues might, came up, might come up, what things they haven't thought of, and people just don't do that. They don't think of it. So how do you get over that hump? You have to read it. Well, your parents, when they bring you up, they teach you some things to do automatically. You bump into someone, you say, excuse me. Someone does something for you, say thank you. But parents don't teach children, if you have a subtle problem or issue, think whether you have the knowledge to solve it yourself, and if not, who has that knowledge and how can you go talk with them? Nobody teaches their, their, their kids that. Uh, there are many other reasons. Another reason is they fear that it shows weakness. Another reason is maybe they've asked for advice in the past and gotten lots of contradictory advice and then become paralyzed and they don't seek advice in the future because they wouldn't know what to do. Or they only seek advice from one person, can't have a contradiction if you only get it from one person, right? So there are many reasons. I had a dialogue with a CFO one time who said he never seeks advice, for example, from his CEO because then he would feel obligated to follow the advice. And that's why children perhaps don't seek advice from their parents. They would feel obligated. So there are many subtle reasons uh, why people don't seek advice. And the end result is they make needlessly inferior decisions. So the book's that's called what? Advice is for winners, how to seek, get, and use advice. All right, Raul Valdez Perez, thank you so much. Thank Good you. to see you again. So if you don't have the experience, there's a book for that. A uh, former CEO from right here in our region has written just that book. It's called You'll Manage, uh, Lessons Learned from a Former CEO. And the former CEO is Chris Allison. He's back with us today. Thanks, Welcome. Bill. Good to see you again. Good to be back. Running toll grade for people who uh, right. don't recall. Right. right. CEO for almost 10 years. Yeah. And a great success story. Great run, running that business. Yep. I retired in 2005. Um, it had been 
almost 10 years, which is about five years longer than the average CEO tenure, which is about five. So it was uh, it was just time. I was ready to move on with the next next phase. Yeah. Well, what's been the next phase? You've been at it now for eight years, yeah. I guess. Well, right. It's, it's been great. It's it's Tilbury is kind of a distant memory. I'm a mm -hmm. college professor now. I teach at Allegheny College. I teach entrepreneurship and finance. I do a lot of writing, and I'm I'm pretty actively involved in that. I've invested in a couple of uh, startup companies. Um, just made another two investments within the last year. One's in an online uh, education company, and the other is a shale company. To get that itch, go in, start from scratch well, again, you know, do, it, do it all over well, again? Well, it's funny, I, t I t tell a joke to my students at Allegheny that I, I came down from for breakfast one day and I told my wife, I said, would you go downstairs and get a three wood out of my golf bag? And she said, well, what's that? And I said, well, just grab any one of them, it'll work. <laughs> She says, why am I going to do that? I said, I want you to hit me in the head with it <laughs> because I'm thinking about starting a company again. And she said, how would you do it? And I said, I'd go look for problems and see if we could come up with solutions and pick the big one with the biggest market. So, you know, I get that itch every once in a while, but, you know, as I say, I got, I got the sensibility kind of blows through my ears and, uh, and then I decide not to do it. Okay, so, so now you are an author, professor, et cetera. The book's called You'll Manage, Lessons Learned from a Former CEO. Lots of words of wisdom. Chris Allison, well, thank Well, thanks you so a lot, much. Bill. When we come back, two more authors help us delve into history from the very real to the very imaginative. Stay with us.